We are very excited for this big event on June 4, so please join us. And we are also very grateful to our sponsors. And on behalf of one of our sponsors, Steris US Endoscopy, we are happy to present you the latest news and developments in the GI endoscopy. And uh, I'm happy that uh, during this event, I'm traveling around. And uh, so I arrived in Forli Cesena, and I'm very happy to welcome Carlo Fabri, who uh, is a member of the University of Bologna. Hi, Carlo. Hi, and, Thomas. Uh, I, let me just guess. I guess it's something pancreatobiliary. So what's, uh, what's your topic uh, today? Uh, the topic today is to speak about uh, a new era in endoscopy because uh, we know very well that uh, since a few years ago, EOS and the RCP are really separated. But now, fortunately, in a lot of centers, there, the, there is the availability of more than one doctor uh, that are able to practice an integration between EOS and the RCP. That means biliopancreatic endoscopy. I, I like that term, actually. Um, it's, it's a new term and it's more global. And I think you biliopancreatic guys, you have to defend yourselves against the, the great innovation happening in luminal endoscopy. So it's luminal endoscopy LE versus BPE. And, and Carlo, what, what's the greatest challenge here? It's probably not stones, is it? Ah, uh, the, the meaning is that uh, we have to avoid necessary surgery. We have to distinguish benign lesion and malignant lesions, and obviously to detect also dysplasia. And so we have to be prepared our staff uh, to know and to look uh, very deeply the biliary tract and the pancreatic duct to samples in the perfect way, the tissue. There is a strong group of people saying, okay, problem solved, we have biliary endoscopy. So in every case, we look into the bowel and forget biliary sampling. What is your reply? Uh, I would like to say that uh, in a lot of cases, uh, uh, the mast uh, too often, often missing and so um, if uh, we consider FNA alone or brushing alone without a good technique, without a good pathologist, uh, the results are totally unsatisfactory. And so that means that uh, we need to work together. So what do you actually do um, in, in uh, such a patient? O of course, it's important to have a good device. And we are talking about the infinity device. So maybe you can explain it a little bit, um, what it consists of. Yes, uh, the infinity device uh, is a, a device where we can see that the morphology of uh, that device uh, that can determine the possibility to collect a lot of cells. And uh, there are two sizes, nine French and 7.5. French. And so if uh, I use uh, the larger brushing, I can approach the stenosis in the common bile duct. But uh, when I have uh, some curves uh, or some angles, I can use the 7.5. And so two is better than one. And obviously to uh, obtain more than one passes, at least three passes in uh, biliary stenosis. And uh, when there is uh, the availability to use uh, also the evaluation of uh, on-site pathologists, uh, obviously is a, a rare opportunity to have the uh, availability of a pathologist uh, on-site, but uh, there are uh, uh, new evidence that uh, uh, the use of this approach improve uh, the accuracy, the global accuracy. Okay, so that's, uh, I think that's quite an impressive accuracy at the end with this combined approach. So be patient, the message is do three brushes. How many biopsies? Also three, usually on average. Uh, three is mandatory and more than three is the best. 
Yeah, I see the point. I think uh, you made a very strong argument for exploiting the traditional tools we have. Also here, we have seen with these new devices where there is progress. And uh, on behalf of uh, my partner, Alessandro Repigi, Carlo, I thank you very, very much for joining us today. And uh, to all of you who are watching, we cordially invite you to join us on June 4, because there will be all techniques. It's a 12 hour worldwide live stream. You see colangioscopy, you see brushing, you see everything. So please join us. And again, Carlo, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Bye bye. ERCP still plays a major diagnostic role in regard to biliary strictures, but uh, nonetheless, there is room for significant improvement. Today, I would like to talk about tissue acquisition during ERCP and how this can be enhanced. It is sufficient to say that reports show that two-thirds of uh, indeterminate biliary strictures are malignant, but uh, one-fourth of all surgical resection specimens for this indication were reported as benign disease. Until very recently, brushing had always been considered an easy, cheap and fast method to acquire a cytological specimen. But despite a specificity of nearly 100%, the sensitivity is still around 45 So. In effect, we are still talking about accuracy that we associate with flipping a coin. This situation exists because insufficient effort has been made to improve technique and technology. This low percentage clearly means that we have to ask and answer some fundamental questions in order to get better results. Several studies have shown that the use of multiple tissue sampling techniques in combination can help to determine the indeterminate. Fluoroscopically guided forceps biopsy sampling has been individual sensitivity of 35%. But when this technique is combined with brushing, the cancer detection rate improved to 63% which is a very good result for such a demanding procedure. A compelling reason to increase investment in ERCP tissue technology is that it leads to a significant reduction in unnecessary surgery. When we decide to approach an indeterminate stricture to obtain tissue samples, we have to consider the following key considerations and points before undertaking the procedure. The first are the technical aspects, choice of device, the choice between biopsy or brushing, and the technical challenges during sample acquisition and, of course, to have adequate fluoroscopy imaging. Then we have to consider lesions and their surroundings. First of all, the characteristics and, of course, difficult locations, in particular to consider curves and angles in biliary tracts. Very recently, an Italian retrospective study reported that the diagnostic herd of ERCP-guided brushing of biliary strictures, when supported by rows, had a sensitivity far higher than those reported for brushing alone and at least comparable to those of more expensive and invasive techniques. The ERCP guided brushing uh, obtained probably better results when the rapid on-site evaluation is added. Adding the rows to ERCP guide brushing technique could be considered the first choice in the diagnosis of indeterminate biliary strictures, also avoiding multiple ERCP sessions and expensive adjunctive techniques. However, data shows that an on-site pathologist is only present around 30% of the time. 
The Infinity ERCP sampling device is proposed built for collecting substantial and quality samples from strictures in the biliary duct. It represents an important step forward. Better performance is achieved thanks to innovative characteristics which can be enhanced using various techniques. There are two different catheter sizes. The 7.5 French is more flexible and switchable for very tight strictures and for approaching very angled and curved tracts. The 9 French catheter is slightly larger and may make traversing a stricture somewhat more difficult. Let's look at the advantages. Unique wire guiding to get your specimens, serrated jaws for grasping, and good visualization under fluoroscopy. For uh, a pathologist, tissue is the issue. Increased tissue yield improves the pathologist's ability to make a diagnosis in case of potentially malignant biliary stricture. Articles in peer-reviewed journals are positive in their assessment of the Infinity ERCP and recommend its increased use, especially by experienced staff. It's important to stress that the device is only one of a number of factors that determine successful tissue acquisition. Finally, I want to say that for optimal result, we need to identify the weak links in our chain and make them stronger. Mm -hmm.